to activate. Oh, and he had the read. Not gonna get that edge guard situation, but it, or Mango's doing such a good job of oh, wow. smashes in the yeah, the oh, and that's it! And Mango! Mango takes it! Three, two, eight, one! Oh my gosh. One Seven more hit will do it! Six seconds! Oh Five. my god! I don't know what's gonna happen. Four, four, three! Two, it's gonna be a timeout. Oh, oh my god. god! I don't know! Oh, there, there it is! is. Super Akuma takes the mix up 2019! The first Master event of the season! Welcome everyone to Esports in 30. I'm Brody Moore and this is Drew Face and we got a ton of FTC goodness to break down today. Drew, what's on the docket, buddy? Bam! We got some <laughs> We got some stuff from the mix-up. Yeah. We got some stuff from the pound. Yeah. Some, some melee action. Melee. Some Tekken action. We saw a French dude win Tekken for some reason. First <laughs> master event of the year. Yo, shout out to my baguettes out there. It was crazy. That was amazing. Well, of course, first up on uh, the agenda is the Epic Tekken 7 tournament, as you said, that we had at Mix Up. We've got a friend joining us in just a few minutes, but before we get to chatting, let's check out the highlights. That's range. Red versus on head. Chip good in. It's going to be max mode activated. Oh, oh, oh. plus red. Assassin 3. Oh, oh, my God. That's going to be it. Goes for the range. It's going to hit. It. And that team's going to take the first round here. I can't believe it. He is winning the set for the first time. Yes, take the lead. I can't now. believe it. Good break on the throw. Instant. Smart. This could oh be it. Goodness, right. That this might be, be it. it. Is it Nian loser's bracket? No. Oh. I can't believe it. She he has it. taken knee out. Last chance. Oh. John Dink still alive here. What's he going to do? And this is it. Guess the game. No, oh. stop. Oh. Jim, throw it. Throw out of range. Goes for the race drive. It's blocked. Oh. Oh, oh my god. Oh. oh. No deals it. <laughs> oh, here it is. Oh, here ah. we go. Here, here we, we go. go. Why did you say that, Mark? I, I want to see part of it. Oh my god, look at the health! And, and the demon, the and the bar. demon! Let's go! I can't believe what we're seeing, and look at the life bar! Oh my goodness! Is he, is, he probably has this a sliver, right? A he might have a sliver. Combo. What? Oh my god! Oh my god! Let's go! Oh! oh the, the comeback! Oh, well, okay. he has an opportunity, he capitalizes. Uh, ooh. <laughs> oh, double KO! In the first round, oh my goodness. Up four, four. Oh my god. Death is there. No punish! He could have got a big punish. Great throw, great. Down two again. He's been very careful. There right. it is. Wow. The Wild Standing Four. Wow. And Rox Dragon's knee has been eliminated from the mix up 2019. Oh hey. my god. No. He needs to be very careful. Oh course. my god. He needs to be very careful. 4 4 2 from Jin. Probably will catch him. He throws a bad fireball. Oh my god. Oh, Super Kuma head in hands right now. But Super Kuma working on a perfect head. Oh. Being so relentless. Oh, oh, a mini pop off there. The crowd is loving it. Seven golden letters. Go to see Big Oh my god. Still has. Oh, he's going to run him down in the top. Oh, the D -D -D -D. Two oh, seconds left. What? Oh, oh, the clutch from CBM at the end there. The super for Super of Kuma is glowing. And there we go. Clean uh oh. Hit. Get the wall splash. Oh my god. He's going to bring him back into the stage. Oh, oh, yes. oh my god. The swag. Oh, oh my god. days. No, no, no! Oh my god! Super Akuma! Super! The highlight oh reel, the low high fighting back! No, gets a toe jab. Oh, he loses jab. now. Okay. The, no duck! Jump back! Oh my god, Super Akuma! Here we go, gets the party started. Hey! Okay, also go for the tattoo. What's the oh, he catches him, duck in! Here we go, one mix up away. One mix up away. That's right! That's gonna be it. it! Super Akuma eliminates you while you low high and secures himself a spot in grand finals! There we go. He's catching in his face down. Oh, this might be it! This might be it! And it is! Reset point! Oh, oh my no. god! Here we go! The party has been started and he has to pass! Oh my god! Is he gonna finish it here? Oh my gosh! One Seven more hit will do it! Six seconds! Oh Five. my god! I don't know what's gonna happen. Four, four, three! Two, is it gonna be a timeout? Oh no, my timeout. god! I don't know! Oh, nice. there it is! Super Akuma takes the mix up 2019! The first master event of the season! Now we've seen Akuma rack up wins in Street Fighter, but the character just got a massive dub in Tekken thanks to Super Akuma. To help us break down the first stop of the Tekken World Tour, we've got Tekken commentator Spag joining. What's up, buddy? How's it going, guys? How's it going? Oh, man, what's cooking? What's cooking, baby? Mm -hmm. We got to talk about that. Damn, Super Kuma, though. Yeah, man, the home favorite came up huge at the mix-up, taking down uh, Cherry Berry uh, Mango. I'm just going to call him CBM because it's a crazy name. In the grand finals. Uh, what did you see from this guy that allowed him to pick up the dub? 
Uh, well, Sid Prakum has always been one of the top guys in Europe, you know, two times Tekken World Tour finalist mm. um, and just general all around really, really strong player. Last year, he had a great season as well. Um, so, you know, but the thing is, I, no one kind of expected him to win this one. You know, you have the first master event, the first event for the Tekken World Tour 2019. You've got people like me, Chanel, you've got Koreans, Japanese, you've got people from South America as well. I mean, no one really would have expected a European to take the whole thing with all those big names there. Mm -hmm. So, you know what, what I think about it? I think, you know, home turf, passion was there, the French people allowed, uh, allez, and allez, know, allez. he believed in himself, and there, yeah, he managed to win it. Yeah, I, now the thing is, I just, I just want to know about the character, Kuma, because, um, you know, I haven't seen a lot of Kuma, man, like, uh, this season, last season, and uh, I, I can't believe he's actually got a big W this time. Like, why, why, has, why hasn't Akuma really been getting the spotlight here, at least in North America, as much as other characters? Well, Akuma is very different to uh, your conventional Tekken character. Of okay. course, he has meter, he has a very 2D based gameplay, you know. Uh, Tekken, Namco had done a good job in translating him into uh, Tekken, but... He still is very unique and he requires very good execution. I think that's one of the things which kind of prevents people from playing him, is that the combos that you see Super Akuma do and other Akuma players, they're not easy to do. Very, very hard combos to do and execution has to be on point, especially in the stress of the tournament. So uh, Super Akuma has definitely been able to to keep his execution high, that's why he, he's been doing so well. Do like so? Do you think like if, if someone's really versed in Street Fighter, they'd be able to transition over nicely, or do you think that you know not being 2D element would still be a little much? Well, I mean, Super Kuma doesn't play Street Fighter, and he's managed right. to, to you know to do it. Uh, but you know, we actually saw when Kuma was released um, onto Tekken 7 before it came out on console. Punko, who's one of the oh, best yeah. Street Fighter players in the world, actually started playing Tekken, and he was doing really well in tournament. I, I think he even won a couple of tournaments too with Akuma. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it kind of proves that you know, if you're a Street Fighter player, Akuma is a good a character that you can use successfully. That's cool. That's nice to have that kind of like uh, transition and make people ease into it as well. Yeah. Um, now mm. we do we do have to mention though that Super Kuma initially got dropped down to uh, losers by CBM, but in the grand finals, obviously that result got flipped. What did you see in his change, uh, or sorry, in his playstyle that changed up that allowed him to get the the win in grands? Well, Akuma is a very uh, mix up based character. You know, in your face he'll mm. he'll do like either a low or mix it up with a mid. It's as simple as that, right? Um, Super Akuma is the type of player as well who sees, okay, if you know how to play versus Akuma, it doesn't matter. He'll know how to mix it up. He'll know how to change his gameplay to adapt to what you're doing. That's the great thing about Akuma that people underestimate. He's so good at changing up his gameplay, right? Um, and that's exactly what he did, and I believed that he would be able to do it. I didn't know if he would get the win, but I knew at least that he would adapt his gameplay and he would know exactly what CDM did to beat him the first time and, mm. and make the adaptation, and that's what he did. And I, I just didn't expect it to be so easy for him. You know, five <laughs> yeah. matches in a row, I mean... He got adaptation flustered near the made. end, like, that was insane. Like, he got really flustered with all those punishes and, and, and CBM just couldn't do anything about it. What, what do you think CBM could have done to improve against right so Kuma. talking uh talking to the koreans after the event literally just after they said they haven't got a lot of high level akuma players in korea so their mm. practice versus the character is not so good even if you know what to do by theory if you haven't set your reactions to punish and to actually do what the theory tells you to do mm -hmm. you won't be able to do it so um you know that's one thing they haven't got a lot of akuma practice and we in europe do have a lot of practice and so a lot of the european players like Aston was telling me man cbm did not do the right thing he didn't float him out of demon flip when he could have he didn't you know sidestep left and block which is what even super akuma says is the thing to do versus akuma you know super akuma is very very strong but people in france beat him um. people in france are able to beat him because they they have him as the practice, right? So I guess maybe there was an element of unfamiliarity uh, by CBM and the other uh, the other players, but mm. you can't take away from Super Akuma. The dude played like a beast. And now, even with my my limited knowledge of the scene, I do, of course, know about Nii. Um, this is a the guy goal. that everyone's <laughs> considered like the best second player of all time. He's a goat. Um, yeah, 2018 <laughs> was great oh, for him. But mix up, you only finished fifth. Is that is this like worrisome? Like, is this other people catching up? Was it him just having a dip? Um, or like, what what's going on? Why why fifth, not first? Yeah, imagine how good of a player you have to be to get fifth, and people say, man, he's dropping off. What's going on? You know, this guy, of course. He won so many events last year. I think he won five master events and he didn't even travel to some of them. Yeah, uh, like, so the guy crazy, is like. definitely, he's, he's a beast, right? So you <laughs> expect him to win. But actually, if you look at the mix up, the bracket was very stacked. Uh, there mm -hmm. were 
uh, and sometimes tournaments can come down to who plays who in the pools, right? So uh, I remember quite off the bat in the winners' finals of the pool, Chikorin had to play against Ni, and mm -hmm. Chikorin is considered the best player in Japan at the moment. So that was a very close match. Mm -hmm. I think if Ni would have won that match and stayed in winners, he probably would have breezed through the bracket, but him going into loser bracket is what probably prevented him from winning the tournament. Chikorin is very, very strong geese player from Japan. He's the one that put him in the in the loser bracket. He got his run back in the top eight. And he did beat Chikorin at the end, but, yeah. um, you know, getting into the loser bracket early like that is a very long road back to winning that tournament. So do you think, if, like, because he lost to Naroma in the lower, do you think if he had met him in the upper bracket, it would have been a different story and it was just simply being down there that maybe kind of uh, killed some of his momentum? Well, just just the fact that you're down in that loser bracket, you know, you only have one more chance. Mind, you know, it's yeah. a bit extra stress. It's more like, oh man, if I if I drop a, a match, I'm literally one match away from going home. So it's more stress than these. I guess Nee's not really used to going down to the loser bracket so early. Um, but I think I think if he was in the winners, he would have done. It would have done probably a little bit better, but I, watching me, you know, he's trying to experiment a bit more. He was using more characters like Paul. He doesn't really use Paul that much, uh, but, and he's trying different, different characters. So I expect him to still do really well. He's, ha he's had a good result. Fifth is not bad, uh, but I expect to see some, some dubs coming from him soon. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Rangshu was the champion of the Tech World Tour last yeah. year, but at Mixup, he lost to Naroma and Lohai, placing ninth. Well, what does Rangshu have to do to get over this this little slump of his? Because like he was doing great last year near the end, but he should be yeah, coming into I mean, that really well. Yeah, you should. You, you would think that because, of course, he was Tekken World Tour champion. But you know, when you look at the caliber of competition there was at this event, it, it, you can't really blame him for, yeah. for, for for not doing as well as he did. Because even Rangchu, you know, last year Tekken World Tour, the great thing about him is that he didn't really win any master events, but. He won the World Tour. That was the whole story behind Rangju. He didn't win anything uh, during the World Tour, but then he won the big one when it mattered. So, you know, he's doing fine, I think. You know, I, I expect him to do pretty well as well. But if you think about it, there were people like Lohai, CBM, and Ulsan, you know, who are very, very strong players. And these guys know how to play versus Rangju. Um, they say, you know, especially Ulsan, 19 years old, you know, a very, very strong player, won damage Germany the week before. And he's, and he, destroyed Rangchu, said that I know exactly how to play against him. So there are people who are kind of doing their research. When you're taking World Tour Champion, there's targets on your head. Mm. People are going to be trying to beat you. So, you know, he's definitely got to do some more work to keep on the top. Yeah, I think I think maybe we're being like hard. I mean, like ninth, fifth, those aren't really bad spots. No, I mean, like, you're still like, especially in a stack, uh, stack tournament. What like so during a stack tournament, what's like the lowest you would want to see like a rank chew or a knee? Like what's the point that you start get worried about those guys like, oh, maybe they're losing their edge? If they don't make top 16, then uh, uh, it's a bit worrying, right? Yeah, uh, they made sense. top 16, it's a good result. Obviously, Tekken World Tour this year, um, it's a bit of a different format where, uh, or rule change rather, where like your, only your top three performances are going to count uh, in, in master events. So even with one or two bad results, it doesn't really matter because only your top three performances count. If you get three wins or three top threes, only those results count, so it's not a bad result for Rangchu or any of these other guys. Um, they're allowed to be a little bit um, lazy on a couple of tournaments yeah. now. It's, it's not about it's not about okay. accumulating points anymore as it as it was before. So, but Rangchu and all the Koreans actually, you expect them to to do really well if they're able to travel. So I'm not worried about them at all. Yeah, I mean, you know, in this Tekken World Tour, we saw CBM do really well, and he generally gets lost in the whole Korean mix. Who are some of the guys like CBM, or are you think? Do you think it's going to break out yeah, this year, yeah. 2019? Who do we keep our eyes on? I mean, it, it all depends on who travels, man. Like, there's so many Koreans that are able to place. Like, CBM is a perfect example. This dude hasn't got a sponsor. He came here on his own money. Um, you know, Lohai supported him a little bit. I, his, his viewers from his stream. Uh, and, and, you know, the guy deserves a sponsor. He's shown it. Top three Japan, uh, top four down in Germany, and then second place at Mixup. He's a very strong player. And there are many people like him in Korea. There's more gold, Breadman. There's there's so many strong players in Korea that if they get the chance to travel, they will do very well. Ulsan is another example who has broken out onto the scene. So keep your eye out on Ulsan. Keep your eye out on CBM and maybe more gold and uh, Breadman if they get to travel as well. Those are some names that you may not be familiar with that will do very well if they get the chance to, to go to tournaments. Okay, now it's it's probably way too early for yeah, this, really but we're going to make you do it anyways. Can you give us uh, maybe just like uh, your top three that you think are going to win it all? Or even just if you already have someone in mind, who you think is going to, by the end of all of this, take the, the whole tour? 
I actually said um, on commentary that I was going to make my prediction now because I want I want to be able to go back and say, hey, I was right months ago, right? Yeah. I think Chanel is going to win the whole thing. All right. I, I think it's going to be the same as every World Tour where there's been one dominant player, could be me, could be someone else. But I think Chanel is due a big win. And the guy is still performing very consistently. I think with his Julia now, if he's able to, if he's able to refine the Julia, that is going to be the guy to swoop in and, and win everything. All right, Chanel. clip it and hold it against Spag when it doesn't come true, or when it <laughs> does. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Trust me. All right, right man. I'll gonna... hold you through that one. I, I believe it now. Then, anyway, Spag. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but yeah. I just want to thank you so much for joining us uh, uh, and enjoy the Tekken World Tour, man. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, guys. Now we've of course got to shift over to some Smash. Ultimate and Melee both had some epic runs from players that hadn't lifted the trophy in some time, so let's check out the highlights from Pound 2019. Right. Uh, he'll just blow it up, and sometimes people die super early because they, they're they like so high up trying to get that up air that, you know, or that nuclear, or whatever they're trying to get from the top, that they just end up putting... Oh! oh you won't! Oh, you won't! Oh, he really, he really oh, hit him with, my, he hit him with the out. box. 119, Wait. potentially Wait a blessed, or is he cursed? Wait a minute. What oh, the? What? what? How did you grab him? What? How did he grab him oh, from he's there? he's smirking. He knows what he did. He got away with that. That was highway robbery. <laughs> air dodge goes into him. Going to take 54. Oh. He's air dodging again. MVD is reeling on the ropes. Jeez. I mean, that was, that was an instant up air from the kick. Oh, oh dear God. Oh. Jesus. Oh. And he's out of this tournament. Spike all the way down. Not going to be enough. Yeah. Still good, some good damage. Also great. Oh, oh my oh. God, sir. <laughs> That's the Mars. Stop! Olimar, you can land on many planets. Ah! Mars is not one! TK knows? Pretty good record. I don't know TK knows. Well, I mean, everybody, everybody, watch, myself everybody say watched back in the day. Three minutes? <laughs> That's my favorite. 164. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> He was really riding the wave, he was riding the momentum, but I feel like he might want to back up yeah. a little bit now because the bus has recomposed. No. Or he's just going to get the up tilt. He's going to take the game and he's going to defeat the bus. Uh, I think we're getting one more set. I mean, the ally already at 84%. Finally finds a way down to the ground there, Master. 21. Okay, nice. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! because those recoveries from Mango were so good, and yet H-Box still finishes that edge guard. Yep. He definitely made him work for Oh it. my god! Oh, 49%! 49%! Oh Yoshi's story, Mango! Oh man, let's see. Okay, going for the dare. Oh, okay, man, up smash, up right throw, up percent! Okay, this is when Clutch Box begins to activate. Oh, and oh. he had the read! Not gonna get that edge guard situation, but eight, or, and Mango's doing such a good job oh, of these up smashes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just being really careful. Uh, oh my god! Oh, 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 what, oh. what a read! Okay. And yeah. Oh, wait! Okay. Oh! Never mind. Almost made it. There it is. Great stuff from HBox. He just doesn't have a flow chart. He literally is such an instinctual player. He just he feels out the game sometimes. And he's going right oh into my Oh my god! god. Mango. Mango. Mango! Mango! What is going oh on right my. now? Commits to that uh, that read instead of trying to go for the reaction. Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! god. Mango's on fire! Mango chance no. coming out. The crowd wants to see it. Of course. Oh, oh what a wow. grab from H-Box. But, but great DI. Oh, oh, and oh, yeah. Yeah, there oh. it is. That's the reset. Big Phantom right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was real big. Okay, get the nuclear. Oh, oh, oh. look at Dreamer read that. Yeah. Okay, he'll take that. And up there, oh. just comes down oh. aggressively. Oh, stage. oh wait, and, and there it is. is. And Hungry Box. H-Box is your pound 2019 mm -hmm. Smash Bros. Melee Champion. All right, lots of gameplay to talk about. Let, let's get the negative out of the way. Uh, after his win over Mango, Hungry Box had a crab thrown at him by a spectator uh, in the audience. First off, why you're throwing things. Secondly, a crab. Drew, what the hey is going on with the Melee community right now? Man, you can say that was very selfish of them for oh hating on 
hungry box there. Can I leave? But Am it I was a really right now? You know what? That's a true went Really crabby. I don't know why Stop they it. I don't know why they doing this. Why they doing it? Why they throwing crabs everywhere, man? I'm, <laughs> why they doing that? So to be real though, I, I'm, at the end of the day, it's kind of cool because now Melee's getting exposure, I suppose, but like Look, if they want exposure as the Florida of the FGC, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's some well, stuff I Florida guess. Man throws crab at, at hungry box. No, but real like is is this like are we seeing just a complete mental decline of the melee scene? Like, are they? Uh, you so know, what? I, I feel like they just they just want to like they're not happy with the state of their scene, yeah. and they just want to find a scapegoat. And that scapegoat happens to be Hungry Box, baby. I, I hate it because I'm a puff main too, and I'm like, yo, leave us alone. Like, do you think? Do you well? Then do you think? Because he yelled at the audience afterwards. He like popped off oh, at the audience. Like, I, I would do it too. Do you think? So he was in the right the to do this. Back. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care, man. You, 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 that no, crustacean's no going back to where it came from, the sea. <laughs> That's amazing. So, okay, so the you think he's clubs. justified. All right. Um, well, then, why don't we just talk about gameplay? Because clearly, we know that uh, he was justified. So, obviously, lost behind the shadow of a crab being thrown was the amazing gameplay of Mango, who, of course, did eventually lose a uh, Tiger Box in the end. But he is looking amazing. And I'm wondering, what, what changed? Why is he back on track here? You know, he has a history of doing amazing at Pound. He usually wins Pound. And when Pound came back after, mm -hmm. like, a four-year hiatus, I believe, or two-year hiatus, yeah. uh, he, he had an amazing run. He, he had some of the fastest stocks I've ever seen in so long. And uh, he's an incredible player. I can't believe he's back. He, he was the reason why Melee was so exciting this weekend. Yeah. Because, like, I just want to see how further, much further uh, Mango could go, and unfortunately, he had to run into that that dirty puff main, yeah. yo. Well, uh, so I'm wondering, did you think this was like, uh, you know, maybe that puff main being a little uh, off his edge right now, or do you think it really was just Mango stepping up, or was it kind of a meet in the middle situation? I think it was it was sort of a meet in the middle. Like for example, Mango peaked really early, mm -hmm. and that's why he was able to get to the winner's side. But yeah. unfortunately, when you're when you're the number one player in the world, aka Hungry Box, yeah. you got yo, you're super stable, you're super consistent, especially when He's so good at turtling like yeah, that. Yeah, this this is nuts because well, it wasn't even it wasn't even just H box that he beat for the first time in like a year. He also beat Plup. Yeah, for the first he time hasn't beat too. He hasn't beat Plup like in the last five uh, three tournaments actually. Yeah, it's like, been Plup's a while. Plup's always had his number. So it, he's done a lot of crazy stuff. Mm. Do you think it's, do you think it was him because I think he was playing Fox this time right? He like was, he's been yeah. playing a lot of Falco. Do you think it's that change back to Fox like no, I, I, I think baby? I think it's just a blip. Like a random blip, unfortunately. Okay, so you, you think like, this is because like, like Mango's like a, a streamer now. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> like, he's just focusing on streaming. He's well, not he's really not focused on being competitive. So sadly, like, I wish he was focusing on being mm -hmm. competitive player because that's he's my favorite player in yeah. Smash. Okay. So. Yeah, he's he's amazing to watch, but yeah, that's unfortunate. I don't think he's gonna I keep popping so. off. Like, yeah, All I right. think his streaming career is way more rewarding, especially now that yeah. Evil's. Uh, Evil's not having melee, yeah, so it's like not really true. a focus on melee anymore. Rip. So, anyway, so yeah. we gotta we gotta talk about some uh, Smash Ultimate as well. Um, we gotta talk man, Ally. Ooh, Kinda, my man, sort Ally. Of local, so, sort of local boy, but it's been a while. He made his return. Um, he had a great showing, um, of course, at Prime Saga and just one pound. How has Ally been uh, able to pull himself back up? I mean, like there are so many good Ultimate players now. I don't think Ally's ever had a really bad showing in Ultimate. Really, he's just mm -hmm. not winning as much as he used to. Yeah, but in, like in Smash Four, he. he generally peaked near the middle or the end of the, the game's mm -hmm. life cycle anyway. So this is fairly early for Ally to actually win a okay, major like Okay, so this is a yeah. good, good sign. You're not That's a really good sign. All. I think he's just, you're just going to see, Ultimate has so many good competitors that you're going to see a high mix of mm -hmm. players. So that's, that's, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see like a bunch of names win tournaments. And we're seeing that right now. Yeah. So I'm wondering then if it's starting to come down to like the characters are using. Because obviously Snake is like, like a crit. I actually don't understand Snake players and how their minds work. Because like that setups are nuts. Look, I... You're like, this, no, I don't... <laughs> Ultimate was really dull this weekend for me to watch as a spectator. Because yeah. there was so much Olimars. There's so much... Uh, Pikmin's, I mean, and so much snakes. And then, well, you gotta love that. Like, he took out two Pikmin's. Yeah, he, yeah, he took out two or Pikmin's. Olimar, sorry. Had, yeah, yeah. yeah, he took two out Captain Olimar's, but like, I'm watching Snake <laughs> versus Olimar like for four hours straight. That's not fun. That's not fun for anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. boring. It's, it's also like a snake is more. Grand Finals was another <laughs> double reset of Snake versus Olimar. I'm sitting there like pouring out my mind watching two guys literally play hopscotch with each other. That's what that was what I was watching. Hopscotch in, in a smash game. I don't know how to handle you sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. So so are you do you think this is like this is this the way this it's is gonna go? This is a metal. We gotta get that shit patched. It's, so it needs patched. You think this it's going downhill then? Oh yeah, no, no, no. I, right I just think I just think right now people are figuring out the metal more. 
more. Yeah. And like maybe this is the flavor of the month. Mm -hmm. okay. That's all it is. Next month we're probably yeah. gonna see like I don't know Joker dominate the meta or something. Okay, so something now, crazy. now looking at <laughs> some other because like snakes are, can be crazy. Looking at other snakes uh, like Salem MVD, do you think Ally is now considered up there uh, as like one of the best snakes, or has he got a way to get I mean, his name? In, in Brawl, he was the best snake. Mm -hmm. So I just think he's just kind of claiming his throne. Mm -hmm. So I do agree that he. I don't think he ever left, but. I think that uh, the others are making their stake for the throw. Okay, yeah. So we're, it's going to be an interesting ultimate season. Yeah, so, well, uh, kind of on that topic then, because uh, outside of the main tournament, there was um, uh, a money match uh, that was streamed Ooh. between Samsora and Esam. Yeah! Now, Samsora won 10 games yeah. to one. Are, are we seeing... That's is, my son! Is Pikachu nah, nah. trash now? I... I think... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like, you don't want to say it. I don't want to say it right now, but I... I, I Someone's got to step up. Yeah, <laughs> like that, somebody's like, got to step up, baby. That yeah. Pikachu is not that bad of a character. I just think Sam yeah. is a much better player. Well, yeah. Well, the, but Esam also finished 25th too, right? Like it's it's he, first he had that that 10 and one, and now he's finishing 25th. That's not what we expect at Esam. Look, I, I don't know what he's doing. I don't know who, who mm -hmm. what his nutrition is, but man, he's got to start he needs going a back diet. to the gym. <laughs> he's got to he's got to go back and lift some more in that smash waist, baby. Yeah, it, right. it's a bad look. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, clearly we know your thoughts on the meta right now for Ultimate. So let's t talk a little about uh, Street Fighter Woo. tournament that went on. We can't uh, forget about that. Um, guess what? Punk won. I, I I said it. I think he's gonna have a dominate. Like him and Tokyo are gonna have a really like dominant run yeah. this this season. Well, the, the, so I'm curious because again, a lot, a lot of uh, a lot of people and I, and I hear it are just like, oh, a lot of it's guessing, it's guessing. But you're you're having these guys that are getting consistently uh, at the those top. Those are buzzwords, right. man. Those yeah. are buzzwords. So, like Street Fighter, this past year, Street yeah. Fighter has been one of the most competitive, the most well designed mm. uh, fighting games. Okay. And unfortunately, like it's not so my cup of tea. Now. That's not my cup of tea because it's not my brand of Street Fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's not that's not. I'm not gonna try to take away from the skillful players yeah. here. Like everything, everyone's getting more consistent. Everyone's adapting to this new mm -hmm. uh, style of Street Fighter, and we're seeing that right now. Yeah. Well, it's, speaking of, we're we're seeing a, a legend adapt to Daigo. Oh, my Daigo. lord and savior, Daigo! <laughs> I, I want him to win the whole thing. I know you hype on this man. I want him to win the whole thing, but he, why didn't he? Punk's too good. <laughs> Punk's just too Punk's good. Too what good. was it? Break it break it down for me. Like, what was it that the Daigo couldn't keep up with Punk with? Uh, actually, it was a back and forth match, and yeah. unfortunately, uh, I think just Punk just edged him out because mm -hmm. Punk's good. Punk's I'm not going to take away from him. Punk's is it, really what, good. Is it just like this, his play style that you know, Daigo can get past? Is it like... It, it's, it's more so the decision making at clutch okay. moments. Uh, when they're really, really into that deep, tense moment where you, no one knows what's going to happen. Punk just had the edge Is on it us. like the cool and co collectedness? Is that what it is? You think that would have I think it's a, think it's a bit of, uh, because this is Punk's like second Street Fighter game and this is Daigo's like 15. Yeah. So like Daigo's yeah. probably like, He's, he's probably like mixed up. He's like, yo, an old Street Fighter, but I just yeah, wait him out. Yeah, he's well, thinking old medicine yeah, stuff. Yeah, old medicine stuff. Whereas that's like true. Punk is like, yo, I'm just gonna play the game for what it is. All, All right. right, and so that's what happened. That, that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, I also have to talk about uh, Dogura because he finished Ooh, top, yeah, top, top eight um, after announcing his return to Street Fighter Five. Do you think he's gonna be able to maintain like this kind of level of players? This was just like a good comeback, and he'll he'll drop off. Dogura is amazing. Dogura is amazing. Yeah. like he's this is an amazing fighting game player and. You saw him, he took out Sako, he took out Fudo, he took mm -hmm. out Shien. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just a testament to him as a talented player. And whenever he focuses on anything, you see him, he just rocks this, like, he's always yeah. in, the, in the mix. So it's kind of, I'm not surprised. I think he's, if he's truly committed to being a Street Fighter Five pro again, yeah. then I think he's going to be think he'll the maintain best. it? Yeah, I think he will definitely that's maintain it. That's good to hear. That's yeah. good. Um, now, we've talked about a lot of people today. Um, and Drew, you know, at the end of uh, Esports and 30, we always got to say and ask you, who is your player of the week oh and my. why? Oh, my God. I, I, you know what? It's what? that French man, that baguette, super Kuma, <laughs> baby. That dude beat so many Koreans to win that tournament. I don't even know how he did it. <laughs> I still don't understand. I, don't I just saw him hit a dude and, and take 70% of the health off. With one hit, it was crazy. Yo, that, do you think we're going to see a lot of now Akuma's stepping up? Uh, oh, hell no. Nah. Korea's going to still dominate. This is, <laughs> this is a blip of the radar. <laughs> this is a blip of the radar, yo. All right, so he gets, he gets one week of being good, and that's it. That's it, baby. <laughs> we're we, we not going to see you. Oh, my God. <laughs> we're not going to see you. That's amazing. All right, Drew, well, you know what it is. We got to get out of here and maybe play some of that new MK11. Ooh. Thanks. 
Francis Bake for joining us to Chat Tech in 7. Tomorrow I'll be hanging out here once again to chat about Rocket League. Until then, check us out on all our socials at Squad State, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Peace.